So at this point, we can just jump into the book problems. We're on page 558 still. Um, here are our area ones down here. Um, we're going to do number 46. Inside the eight petaled rows, r equals two sine of four theta without parentheses where there should be parentheses. And uh, here it is written correctly. r equals uh, two sine of four theta. So, um, so it's easy enough to say, okay, the area is going to be one half the integral of two sine of four theta squared d theta, and let's throw that in the calculator. The only question is the limits. So one thing I could do is graph this in my calculator and then use trace mode and see how far it takes to get around. But the other thing I could do is they gave me this hint that it's an eight petaled rose. And they actually gave, they give the domains of all these shapes here. So if we squinch over to where the roses are, and notice it's different for the even petaled roses, the odd petaled roses. So the odd one's gonna go zero to pi, the even ones are gonna go to zero to two pi. Okay, so I have even number because there's eight petals, so it's going to go zero to two pi. So that, so now, without even looking at the graph, I already know that the domain of the function is zero to two pi. And then I just throw that in my calculator, and I get 6.283, which blows my mind because it's two pi. It's exactly two pi. You go out to like 10 decimal places. It's probably exactly two pi. So you could probably, you know, do some kind of fancy schmancy stuff and find that out. All right find out why that is what I meant to say. Let's look at number 56 because now they start to get, you know, through these are okay. And once we get a little bit more complicated, we add in some more functions. So number 56 um, says, number 56 here, it says inside the four petaled rows r equals four cosine two theta and outside the circle r equals two. Well, how, I say, are you going to do that? So our functions are r equals 4 cosine 2 theta. And r equals 2. So at least r equals 2 is a nice simple function. Um, I think I graphed these up already. Let's see. Yeah, there they are. All right, so here's uh, r equals 2, the circle, r equals 4 cosine 2 theta, the line. Uh, the, the rows is what that's not a line. What are you talking about? It's a rose, okay? So I want the area outside the circle, but inside the petal. So I want like each of these parts. All right. So one thing, like you can think of a lot about how you want to break this down. Essentially, we're talking about the area between two curves. So essentially, we're going to do R1 squared minus R2 squared and integrate that, all right, with a one half in front. But where does it begin and end and so forth? So what I did was uh, I looked at, I went to trace mode. And so trace, see how it tells you theta and x and y? Pretty useful, huh? Uh, here's another thing you might not know about trace mode. There are two functions on here. I'm on the circle. I don't want to be on the circle. I want to know, I want to know where, the, where the rows begins and ends. So if you use the up arrows and down arrows, the up and down arrows always just switch you between functions. So this one's r1 equals 2. This one's r2 equals 9, uh, 4 cosine 2 theta. Right, up and down arrows switch you between the functions, and left and right arrows move you along the function. So that's how I figured out that the theta equals zero is this point right here uh, on the rows. And then where is the point where they intersect? That's what I need to know is where they intersect. Well, it's 0.523. I don't really much know what to do with that. So I'm going to probably have to solve an equation. But here, here's something that I thought of is that if I find that intersection point, okay, and I know that the Oh, no, I'm lost in space here. Where am I? <laughs> I know that this point is theta equals zero. So I thought, what if I just do this little lobe and then they're all identical and I've got eight of them all together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I thought maybe I would do um, this little shape times eight, and that might that might be a good simplification of the problem. It doesn't solve the problem that I don't know where these intersect. Oh, and here's a fun thing that I learned about the calculator today. Um, when you're in polar mode, you would like to calculate the intersection between those two functions, right? So I go second calc, and like, oh, it can find dy dx for you, but it cannot find the intersection or, you know, anything else. It can't cal calculate the intersection. It doesn't have that program. Maybe one of you will write the program that will modify 
the TIs so that we can get our intersects. Uh, all right, but for now, we can't. We don't, so we're gonna have to be forced to solve the equation. So how do we find an intersection point? We take our r equals two, we set it equal to our four cosine of two theta. We have a trigonometric equation, so we're gonna have to think about how the coterminal angles work. So I have one half equals cosine of two theta. So now, you know what I do, like you can go inverse cosine of one half, you can do that. I, I tend to go straight to the unit circle because it's a bigger question than just what is the inverse cosine of one half. The question is really, what are all the points where the x coordinate is one half? All right, so uh, the x coordinate is one half here and here. Okay, so these are the points. Um, so I have, uh, this is going to be um, pi over three, right? Pi over three. All right, so I, I know that uh, this is, I'm going to have a solution to this equation when pi over three equals two theta. So that means theta equals pi over six. And so if I think of like going around the circle from, uh, from zero, this is the first point that I get to where, th where my theta equals pi over six for this function, all right, where these two things are equal. So that's the first intersection point from zero then it's pi over six right there, right? And then, and then if I was suspicious of that, I could say, okay, pi over six is gonna be about one half, right? Because pi is uh, three, you know, just roughly speaking. So if we go to the trace and we go to this function. And so I wanna find that intersection point and see if it looks like it's about one half. And so if I go to the intersection point, I get 0.52. Yeah, well, uh, uh, yeah, I think that's about one half. So it's close to pi over six. And so that, that just reaffirms what I got from my calculation here. So I always like to double check things in different ways if I can. All right, so now being armed with the fact that this, is, this point is theta equals zero, and this point is theta equals pi over six, all right? I, and this is always gonna be the real challenge with these, Then the, is finding out what those thetas are. Then the area is gonna be eight times one half, because I got eight of those lobes, one half from the formula, integral from zero to pi over three of four cosine of two theta squared minus two squared d theta, right? So this is your um, r2 of theta, ooh, r2 of theta squared minus r1 of theta squared. The outer function minus the inner function. I put the rows function first because it's farther from the origin than the circle is. All right, so that's how I'm gonna do that. And then I'll just throw that in my calculator and see what I get. I don't know if you wanna see me labor through that, but here we go. Um, I guess I'm gonna simplify the eight times one half and call it four. Uh, math nine for an integral. I'm gonna go zero to pi over three. So pi over three and I'm going to need parentheses, 4 cosine 2 theta, oh, extra parentheses there. Okay, close parentheses for the square. What the? Okay, I guess I need another parentheses and then the square. Does that look right? Yeah, 4 cosine 2 theta squared. All right, minus, and then I'll just put 4. I'm not going to put 2 squared. And then that is, I'm still in polar mode, so it's still giving me d theta, which is... Uh, you know, it's nice, but not necessary. Hit the enter, and it's 9.826, 9.827, okay? 9.827, don't try to evaluate this integral by hand. You can do it, but you don't have to learn that this year, all right? Okay, so uh, we'll do one more, and then I'll, I'll send you off in your homework.